I'm gonna be doing a homeschool day in the life. This is the reality of homeschooling with a toddler around. Close. Thank you. you Maybe avocado toast. Five plus two. Thank you. Ultimately, I homeschool for a reason, and it's obviously because I think that I can provide my kids something that I think the system can't. Morning fam, Sarah here. Welcome back to our channel. It is like cozy pajama day. You're, are you destined to just keep the pajamas on all day? Yeah? <laughs> she wants it to be cozy today. So in today's vlog, I'm gonna be doing a homeschool day in the life, but it's also gonna showcase the realities of homeschooling with a toddler around. A lot of the times it is pretty quiet because when we're upstairs, the noise there's less things upstairs to distract us. Upstairs is just a cleaner area. There's no real toys up there. All the toys are down here in the playroom. And when we're doing homeschooling, it, there's like limited things that baby boy can get into. He can color, he could play with Play-Doh. Those things are a lot less quieter than, than him playing uh, with a noisy, pretending he's washing a hard hat inside of an oven. This is the reality of homeschooling with a toddler around. Sometimes you're gonna hear noise in the background. Sometimes it will be a bit chaotic, but we still make it happen no matter what. Like, listen to that. That's him washing a hard hat in his actual washer. He's left the room to go do it out there. Wow. <laughs> oh my gosh. You know, in a 10 minute video or a 12 minute video that we share, it can make things look so, so easy and so simple but in the background no one really understands some of what we actually do and have to work around i'm not complaining by any means because ultimately i homeschool for a reason and it's obviously because i think that i can provide my kids something that i think the system can't either way i'm not hating because i do have kids that are at school in the public school and i also am homeschooling my littles but long story short, it is not as simplified as it always seems because today we're actually gonna attempt to homeschool my daughter down in our basement. We're gonna attempt to homeschool in our playroom for the first time in the new year. I don't know why I just had this grand idea, but it was just like, we were upstairs this morning, we did a puzzle and that was really fun, but then I was like, let's go downstairs. Oh my gosh. Today I had a grand idea to come down here because I wanted to go do a little workout on my treadmill, but then I still said, you know what? I gotta pull through. I need to do this real quick. I wanted to get her math out the way before I went on my treadmill that way. When I got off this afternoon, it was a less, just less stress on the mind and I knew where I was and the afternoon's a lot easier just reading through our books. It's not how we typically do things, but this is also why I like to share these homeschool day in the life videos with you guys, is because they're just different and things change up from day to day. Some days I'll have an appointment like tomorrow and my homeschool day is gonna be thrown out of whack, but that's the beauty in homeschooling and the flexibility that we have. I can have some days off, I can have short days and I can make up for it so quickly the next because I'm just homeschooling her at the current moment and I still I'm homeschooling him as well but it's not like it's not it's not a must it's more of a want and so there's just a lot of room for flexibility and honestly I find this kind of happen all the way throughout elementary so there's, there's just a lot of flexibility with homeschool in fact we started off um, doing a big puzzle this morning which I didn't even film which how was the puzzle it was great yeah it took a while because it was I think 300 pieces and no, I think it was like oh, I think it was three. Two hundred. Yeah, there may have been two hundred or or three hundred um, pieces, and it took a minute to do. So we did that, and honestly, I'm a little tired today. We have our setup here, and if you remember, we used to have this setup upstairs when we were doing work up there. This is a little desk that I had in the corner, and they and they did work in that corner for a little bit but then we kind of just moved to our big dining room table because it just made more sense as she got bigger like certain books like this book right now is folded in half it just could not sit across the whole table it was just taking up way too much space so i just had to kind of move us over we're doing our math and we're just getting ourselves ready also in today's video i'm going to chit chat a little bit and answer some of the questions that you guys had on my 
uh, video where I sent my my homeschool kids to high school. You guys had a lot of feedback on that. So I'm just going to do a quick little lesson here and then I'm going to really kind of focus today's video on answering that question, your guys' question and talking a little bit about that because there are definitely mixed messages and there are I know there's a lot of strong opinions about the subject matter. So anyways, we'll get into it, but I'm going to do this quick lesson with my daughter. Lay out the, the blue clocks from the math box and say the time on each of the clocks. And you got to say the time on these. Okay. Okay. So they said blue. This is blue. Okay. Okay. Okay, so what? Six, so... What time is that? Shorthand is pointing to what? Four. It's not quite pointing to the four yet. We talked about that. It's still at three. the three. Yep, three. Three thirty. Good job. Very good. What does this one say? Nine o'clock. Good job. And this one. Eleven thirty. Good high five. Good job. And this one? Two o'clock. Good job, excellent. Four o'clock, yep. And... Seven? Well, it's, huh? Yep. Seven? Mm -hmm. Seven, three. Good job, Zoe. Excellent, oh my goodness, high five. How are you finding learning to tell time on an analog clock? Easy. You're finding it very easy, huh? Good job. So guys, I'm coming into the vlog to just kind of explain some things because I was trying to explain it in this video, but as the video went on, the footage changed for some odd reason. However, what I was trying to say was that she is learning the, the analog clock now and she's doing such a great job at it. Before the book we were working from, it did have a little teaching from analog about the analog clock, but it didn't really explain anything. It was more on the parents to kind of just figure out how to teach it and oh be careful and it didn't give you any indication as to what is the most effective way but since she started doing this version she's been doing so good like it took one day of kind of going through using those car those little um be careful using those little cutouts and things that they use for games and stuff and it just seems to make it more interesting it's like hands-on as well so she just kind of grasped it really, really well. Another fun fact is that my older ones who are in high school, they are, they've been informing me that like the public school, like public high schools are looking to remove the analog clocks. Because if you guys remember from back in the day with schools, we had those big analog clocks up and it obviously is there to help us figure out, you know, when to get to our class and such. Um, long story short, a lot of kids don't know how to read it today because they don't teach it there. And I guess they're not even teach. It hasn't really been taught throughout public school or elementary school and, and so forth. So the kids in high school are kind of stuck. And these days everyone has devices and all those things. They rely heavily on devices to kind of tell them the time. And so, yeah, they're going to be removing it and just putting like the digital clock, I guess, so kids can know how to read it. So I don't know. Is there, I guess, to each their own. It's one of those types of things, right? Is there, is it necessary to learn how to read the analog clock given that we're getting to a digital era? Right? But, but is it a fun thing to learn? If there's digital clocks around, your kids can still know how to read it. It's, it's, it's not the easiest thing to teach to grasp. It's along the line of, lines of math and that's why so many kids tr um, struggle with math. Yeah, I just thought I'd share that fun fact. Let's get back to the vlog. In case you're wondering what Zavi's up to, this is him in his habitat making messes. Zavi, did you make all the mess on the floor? Do you mind cleaning it up ever, please? Well, yeah. It's two of them. Oh, two of them. Yeah. So. Earlier on upstairs, we did some counting with him. What did we count by upstairs, Zoe, with Zavi? What did we count by up there with him? You remember on the abacus, what were we counting by? By tens. By tens. And he really loved it. So we did that. We went over that about three or four times. Yeah. 
Do you remember counting this morning, Zavi? Come here. Come here. Thank you. What did you count by this morning? Minions. We're not talking about your minions, boy. Did you count by tens this morning? Can you remember? Can you go over it again? Ten. Ten. Twenty. Twenty. Thirty. Forty. Fifty. Sixty. Seventy. Eighty. Ninety. One hundred. <laughs> so he did that this morning. We did use the abacus to go through it with him and he, that was a part of his little lesson this morning. And he also played what? The shopping game. Yeah. He played the shopping game. He played the shopping game not for very long, but he played it nonetheless. One of her sisters got it from Amazon for her. So I'll link that down below if you guys are interested, but, but it's a fun shopping game. And what it has is like cards and baskets inside of it. And your child is to take a card or a basket. They put it down and then it also has um, these grocery lists. Grocery lists in the form of a tablet. One is a tablet and then the other two are lists. And um, I think there's actually four lists, to be honest. The thing that tells you what you need on the list, mm -hmm. you have to get it, but you don't know where, what, which one is which, so you try to find it by flipping mm -hmm. it and seeing if it's the card you need. Exactly. It's kind of like a, ma it's basically like a matching game. It's so a memory game. It's a memory game, that's right. And it's something that he plays with, like, on the side while we're doing stuff, so... So while, so Zoe's currently working on like learning patterns, she's doing like AB pattern and um, she's just learning about patterns in general. And so while she's having to create her own pattern, she has to color a pattern. I'm just gonna get down here and just help pick up some of this stuff. This, yeah, this little boy just dumps stuff everywhere while we're down here working. I've been down here trying to like tidy and also purge a whole bunch of stuff, but and I have a video coming on that because there was a day when I was getting rid of a bunch of them and bringing them to where they needed to go, just out of this house. And it just seems like all of it that I keep doing is not en enough because there's still there's still stuff floating around. But anyways, while she's sitting there busy doing her work, I'm gonna be over here just kind of getting some of the stuff up off the floor because it's, it just doesn't look good. And I always want them to work in a clean environment when we're doing homeschooling, but... Which one? You're all done? Yeah? Avocado toast. Five plus two. Thank you. You made seven. avocado toast. Five plus two. Thank you. Three plus five equals seven. Three plus five? Yeah. Three plus five? I know you're, you're doing okay, mental five. math, but you six. should still check. Three. Zoe. Zoe. Check with yourself. Please. Plus nine. I did five it. Five plus two. Remember, look. Five. Plus five. Plus eleven. No. Call yourself five. Plus big... eleven. Good job. That's eleven. Yeah, that's not what you said. Call yourself the bigger number. Eight. Five. Oh, five. Six. Seven. Eight. Yeah. Good job. Yeah. And the messes grow around us. This is the realities of our homeschooling. Sorry. Zavi, stop please. It's not always this chaotic. It's rarely this chaotic when we when we do our work at the table. That's not yours. Oh, she needed that she she needed it for her work. Look, she had to color this page. Look, look, she had to color this. She had to That's color this. That's my recolor page. Oh, you, when we go upstairs, you can color again, okay? That's my recolor page. Okay, here. May I have the crayon, crayons, please? Because we don't what want them over things that? down here. Can you finish your cooking? Can, yeah. can you finish your cooking, please? Yes. Well. Thank you for the avocado toast. It was delicious. No. The Coke. Ten, eleven, twelve. Eight, five, six, seven, eight. Mm-hmm. Six, seven, eight. Fist. A pink fist. I want a pink fist. Four. I want to cook fist, Mom. Five, six. I cook chicken in the wall. This is chicken. Very nice, Abby. I believe it's 
Mm -hmm. I'll do this second. Mm -hmm. 11, 12. I did it, Good Mom. job. Mom, I'm going to cook. Oh, you're cooking? Okay, okay. Ooh, I nice. Did it, you did a great mm -hmm. job, Zoe. I'm so proud of you. You, you, <laughs> give me five. You, you just kind of went right through that so fast. Oh, this is a washer. That's not a washer. That's a microwave. That's a oh. washer. So and that. that's water. That's water. That yellow thing is water. He just likes to pretend everything's that's a water. That's a yellow dryer. Oh, that's a that's a dryer. Yes. Okay, because you like to pretend. Okay. This is that. This is <laughs> so be... just like that, guys. Oh, so we just she just breezed she just breezed through her math. Um, you're not done yet. You got to finish the rest of this page, but this yeah. is going to be pretty easy. <laughs> it says write the word that represents the number. Of envelope three. Oh, yeah. Do you remember how to spell three? Yeah. Go. Go ahead. Try your best. Yep. Yeah. You know the sound that. No. No. Not write it. You have to spell it. Oh. I don't. Know. Well, first we start with the basics phonetically. You sound it out. What two letters together uh, make that sound? T and H. Very good. It's like the word the. Mm-hmm. That's right. A. Yeah. And then we make the sound. So. Oh, no. Er, no, it's, it's fine. It's fine. It's fine. We're not going to keep erasing. T H. And then. Uh, yeah. R. Yep. R? Mm-hmm. Why would we be writing a capital R in the middle of a word? Okay. Look, Mom. Look at this. What's the closet? Mom, see? Yeah, I see. Good job. I closed the door. Yeah? Like this. Okay. I press the buttons. Now, why would you pretend this is a washer when you have a washer out, it's outside mine. there? Good job, Zoe. All done. That's the word three. Now Look, to write Mom. two. It's right. That's easy. Okay, don't, don't, no, don't hit on that. Stop pounding on that. I find this odd that he has an actual washer. It basically is the one that goes with this set. And he has it outside there somewhere. And he's inside here with all the stuff that he shouldn't be playing with. The doctor's kit, blankets, dress up, all the things. Um, and pretending all this stuff is being washed inside the oven and the cupboard. And the fridge. <laughs> huh? And the fridge. And the fridge. <laughs> this is called pretend play at its finest. So I didn't need to go and buy that washer is what we're saying, right? Yeah. I essentially didn't need to go buy that. Wow. Okay. Mommy, you mean? Spell one. Mom. Oh, Mommy. yeah. One second, one second. O and E, honey. One O and E. You know one. O and E. Mm hmm. Okay. O and E. O. Okay, Papa. There. Good job. Very good. Anyways, guys, as promised, I wanted to come and touch base real quickly before I close the vlog um, to touch base on the topic that I recently mentioned in um, a video. I shared with you guys that I recently sent my high schoolers, my high schoolers who are homeschooled all the way up until grade nine, um, to high school. And um, I mean, I made the video now just explaining that, but it's not that recent in the sense I sent my, I do have a grade 10 at the moment and she went in grade nine, but I've also had a whole um 20 like soon to be 20 year old who's gone through and she went in grade 10. i kept her home and, and homeschooled her till grade 10 and she is now in nursing school so i have some experience with public school and i felt the need i have the experience and just with obviously sending my daughter in grade 10 but that's kind of what gave me the drive to uh, or the confidence to keep it going. If it went terribly, which I mean, it wasn't perfect by any means, <laughs> it's the public school, but if it was 
if it just went absolutely horrible, they wouldn't, the rest wouldn't have gone. But because my eldest kind of paved the way and I've learned some skills on how to navigate it, um, this navigate like the system and you know, with my child and stuff like that, I felt a little bit more confident about it. So I saw your guys' comments and stuff and I definitely want to touch base on it more in a video where I can sit down and I can share and talk about it. I also saw someone's, someone commented and asked if I could do a video with, with my daughter sharing their experience and they would love to do that. That's something I've actually had planned for a while. It's just, I don't know what's taken so long, but it's a video idea that we've had mapped out for a while to kind of do. I just didn't know if you guys would really uh, receive it or really want, were interested. But now that I see that you guys are actually interested in the homeschool content, I'm definitely going to keep it going as well. Yeah, I really appreciate your guys' feedback and your some of your concerns. Um, trust me, I not it's, I don't really have a clap back because a lot of your points were just so on point. Like your, you, yeah, today's world is very crazy, and so it is even more of a reason to want to homeschool our children, and that's a big part of the reason why I'm still homeschooling the littles. But uh, we've made our choice, and we made it for a number of reasons, and. We are very, very much involved with the kids on the daily um, with our children and talk to them all the time just to kind of keep tabs. And I think it's a matter of like your kids too. You know, we have a healthy relationship. We trust each other. We are always, always um, communicating and you know we are honest with each other and so i feel like that's another thing that's going it all depends on your actual relationship with your child and the level of trust that you put in them with what you've put into them it's by the time they get to high school they are very impressionable still but by the time you get there you'd like to think that a lot of what you've instilled a lot of the important things that's going to help them navigate the world you've seen people kind of go all the way to you could hold them back all the way throughout high school and they get to a certain place and then they still kind of just go left because they're, it's just their first time exposure to certain things. So they still have to, I guess, learn. Um, they have to get some experience out there regardless of the way we think and the way we feel as moms after putting in so much. But this is... Uh, I don't want to end too much talking about that. I will do it in a separate, I will have a separate sit down video where I can come at you with a nice cup of tea or something or coffee and just have a little chit chat. But as you guys saw in today's video, it was a bit chaotic, kind of all over the place. Um, it was our first time coming down here homeschooling inside the playroom and you know what? It's not the end of the world. It's not bad. It's just maybe on a day where we're taking it easy and having a chill kind of day. It's not the end of the world doing it, doing our math down here. I wanted to test it out because I have some math, um, some math cards and stuff that I want to help use to help decorate their playroom area. And I just kind of want to help surround the room a little bit with some key fundamentals with regards to math. And they're just cute. They're cute and they're decorative. And I also just wanted to kind of see what it would be like working down here. So, like I said, it wasn't it wasn't the, the end of the world. It was doable. And Zoe sped through her math like in a short time. So, but there was a lot of dist I found it to be more distracting than upstairs. So I still think there's a give and take. Um, I wouldn't say I would come down here and trade it in to do our math down here all the time, but I think it's okay for it to be done sometimes. And it also gave me an, I, uh, you know, I found that with my son, he was more distracted down here. He was able to do a lot more things, but I also found that he distracted us more because the things that he chose to do was so noisy. <laughs> <laughs> very very noisy so that is it um, we will be going upstairs to do our reading this afternoon we're on to reading Pippi that's the book that Zoe chose we're reading little chapter books um, we're reading our books throughout the year um, I recently just wrapped up we wrapped up Stuart Little um, about a week or so ago and she's been reading the wild robot with her dad which was recommended i saw by quite several youtubers several homeschooled um youtubers um in their book hauls and stuff like that i don't know anyone's name off the back as i haven't really been following a lot of com the community i'm starting to but i have seen a bunch of 
Um, I got a recommendation for that book and she's loving it so far and it's a trilogy because it's a three-part series and they've had nothing I've heard nothing but good things I mean it, it was like on Amazon but with like 10 I was gonna say 10 stars <laughs> a five star out of like almost 10,000 people reviewed it a five star so that was pretty darn amazing so I don't know if I'm filming anymore when we go upstairs I'm about to go for a quick little casual walk on my treadmill while I listen to my audiobook and these kids continue to play and probably make a disaster of the space that has too many toys that I still need to declutter. I've been trying, you guys have seen it, I've been doing it endlessly and the goal is to not, we don't, we don't really buy a lot of toys throughout the year so that's not a big deal to me but it just feels like there's so much. <laughs> there's already so much here to begin with. And I've been purging, 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 and I can't only imagine that if I hadn't purged all the other stuff, it would be even worse in there, which is crazy. Anyways, guys, sorry for talking your heads off. Hope you guys enjoyed today's homeschool day in the life. I'm sorry I didn't share too much in here, but I hope it was jam-packed with knowledge and facts and humor and all that can come with a day in the life of homeschooling, so. Don't forget to like, comment, share, and subscribe, and I will see you in the next one. Bye, y'all.